I V M. My favorite link is storytell.com slash IVM, which is a lovely place to go. Best books available. I'm not saying that because they're forcing me, but stop choking me. All right, I'll do it anyway. Yes, available on Storytel is a book called Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's a book that's changed my life. It's made me a complete woman. I used to be a very different person, but because of this book, you sort of believe in yourself, your gender and the ability to achieve anything. There are no limits. Thanks to Michelle and Becoming on Storytel. So keep in mind that if you go through storytell.com slash IVM, you get a 30-day free trial as against a 14-day free trial on the link. All right, it's very simple. All you got to do is log on to storytell.com slash IVM. Millions and millions and millions of stories, many written by me. All that and more. Find it all on Storytel. Kripaya Dhyan DGA, the language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, Tread carefully. But listen, yaar. Don't be so conservative. You're listening to Cyrus Says. There once was a king in finance called Govind Ethiraj. No, I stand corrected. His name is Ethiraj. No king there. But he's fun. He's going to tell us all about life in the quiz format. Why follow your auntie's advice when you can follow Cyrus Says on Facebook and Twitter to stay updated about the latest shows? Very happy to know here on Cyrus says that India is a safe country once again. Now that all the protesters again who want to plant trees have been put in jail for the weekend, I think we can all sleep well at night. I've always been saying this that it's not the sexual predator or the casteist or communist that who has to be put in or the corrupt businessman or any of those type. It must be the guy who wants to save trees. They are very dangerous, and I'm just for me. I slept well that weekend. I slept fourteen hours, and I looked out of the window. Not a tree in sight. All's well with the world. It's called Cyrus says. We'll be right back. Are you looking for India's most awesome cricket podcast? Are you now tired of listening to the same old guys drone on about cricket everywhere? Edges and Sledges is a weekly cricket podcast hosted by three fans of the game, Varun, DJ, and myself, Ashwin. It was established in early 2018, has over 60 episodes now, and is of course now proud to be on the IVM Podcast Network. Each week, we get together from three different time zones: the USA, the UK, and Singapore, and we talk about things from the world of cricket, with a focus on Indian cricket. We often interview special guests from all around the world, including former cricketers and cricket media personalities. So check out Edges and Sledges, the cricket podcast, now on the IVM Network. And we are right back, and we're with Govind, Govind Ethiraj, who I probably only spoke to three times in my life, but he probably won't remember. But I have seen you around because you're like this iconic presence in the in the buildings in CNBC, as in the old days, TV18, that entire network which used to exist, and uh, spawned a lot of people. Actually, a lot of a lot of the big names of today have come from there. Yeah, many people with shares in various companies I can't mention, but you know. <laughs> Cyrus, first of all, thank you very much for having me on your show. Go and please don't thank and, me. I have no idea. Yeah, I, you know, I'm just yeah. an idiot. I'm like a VJ. They just you know, last minute push you in front of the camera. Yeah, I, to the extent mic. that you accepted to sit uh, across go. me is a, is a, is a good start. See, intellectually, everyone is superior, so I don't care. There's no pressure on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, we've both been uh, trolling the corridors of TV18 yeah. at a time before. Worst the, canteen I've ever had in my life, though. Now that you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> really bad food. I mean, who takes a dosa, mm. puts it on a tray, then mm. puts paper on it, and walks up steps? I tried to explain to them it's just one minute walk. Just leave it open. Hmm. You can't. You can't put paper on a dosa. The whole idea kills it. Maybe the flies. Well, I don't mind the flies. I'm oh, non-veg actually, okay. so it's not an issue with me. Okay. I just don't want that that taza ability of the dosa that goes and then it's a pointless exercise in eating. You can't eat a stale dosa. That's even yellow water gives you better stuff. Uh, and you know that because because I've been there. Okay. I'm also a financial analyst. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Govin. <laughs> well, Govin, we have lots to talk about. I want to uh, start at the top, then we'll put it all in perspective. Uh, you will launch uh, in the third week of October. You're going to do this India Fact Quiz. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of hype around this. Can you take us through what that is exactly? So essentially, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you a little background. You know, so we started uh, India Spend, where uh, the whole idea was to use data to tell stories mm-hmm. in public interest and focus on issues. Which is like, what the government is doing. Yeah. It's slightly similar, yeah. <laughs> we would focus on issues like health, education, environment, and gender. And why use data? The whole, the larger vision or mission is to say, can we improve the quality of public discourse? Hmm. You know, in India, we always say, oh, I think it was this. Yeah. I think the number of cars sold were this. I think we are doing better than China. I think. Think we are uh, not so good. So, if we were to change that discourse in as more much specific. as specific, make become a little more precise and specific, then hopefully the way we ask questions of those we elect.
respect will also improve the quality of accountability the quality of governance can improve if the the nature of the questioning improves and that can happen only if you bring in some sharper data. citizen will lead to more checks and balances that's the theory saying. that's but the theory I, but i just want to quickly point out to listeners and we have seven uh, that <laughs> you are not anything to do with cambridge analytica nothing at all nothing but at all but you did have shares no i wish i did <laughs> <laughs> and got out at the right time but i didn't okay but you're privy to all their conversations yeah uh, no let's get back to this so, so that's the that's the broader thinking and yeah. uh, that, that's how we started india spend and then we started data buzz which is uh, really using video again in the around the same theme using data to tell stories and india fact quiz is an extension of that saying that okay how do you make young people more aware of data mm-hmm. and uh, evidence in their approach and in the way they think about issues without using naked symbols without using naked to symbols to entice them and 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 can we do that by using a tool which is a quiz which at least in theory can make you more engaged as opposed to you know calling you exposing you to a dull and droning panel discussion which i've done many God. and uh, and well, this is what you should be talking about in public i think too many of these panel discussions just go on for hours and go nowhere question answers is much safer bet yes i agree and a specific answer can come as well yes. of course sometimes the questions are and, as bad and as you mine, learn yeah. with age yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you sometimes you learn sometimes you don't yeah. uh, again interrupting you but the point you're trying to make here is uh, this is like a pan india quiz now yes so that you know you, you have zones We have zones, okay, and then you'll have like a final at the end, and then we'll have a final. This will be broadcast, which will be broadcast on television, and we are figuring out the television. Questions will be it. fixed in advance to favor certain teams. No, no, no. they won't be. So it's not the kind of quiz I do. Yeah, all yeah. right, all right. Can you give us an example of what kind of questions? Yeah, so you know, for instance, uh, the combined population of uh, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra is greater than the population of USA. Is that true or false? A uh, little, a uh, little. Yes, true. Okay, it's true. Uh, boys are studying for more years in school than ever before. False or true? Uh, I'll take a punt. True. Okay, it's false. Damn you! <laughs> One all. So <laughs> the number of match. homeless people in India has increased between 2001 and 2010. I think so. Yeah, but because that's also to do with the population growth, you know. So, I'm, uh, is but it it's not true. It's false. It's, or it's, pro- it's, a, it's not true. Yeah, you waited for me to screw myself. <laughs> uh, you you couldn't resist, right? Now I look like a complete fraud. The rest of the show is downhill. You just do it on your own. Okay, so let me give you a slightly yeah, more yeah, fun yeah. one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are thirty six states and union territories in India. In how many of them can you dial one zero eight for an ambulance? I I wouldn't I mean, expect you to know. But this is a ridiculous question. Yeah. But it's it's a good to I'll know thing, to right? I have to go to. But your point being that you know, if you're in certain such and such state, you should know yeah. for an emergency. Yeah. So all thirty two states, so which is actually count. not Shatish bad. Chhattisgarh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll just twenty. Uh, it's thirty two. Thirty-two out, out of thirty-six, 36 states. You can dial one zero eight. Which are the four that don't have? That's the interesting part. Yeah, and I uh, have you don't, don't have, have that answer ready. But you must well. have it because yes, people will be asking, "Is it my state?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of specifics, yeah. yeah. Very so th- these are the kind of questions. So I mean, in a way, I mean, and the idea is not to uh, show that you don't know, but the idea is to. It's too late. I don't know. <laughs> in any case, <laughs> it's <laughs> trying to be nice. <laughs> don't worry. The standard you, I hope that you get yes. will be quizzers. And I've seen this even with the Bonvita quiz and other yeah. quizzers. They take it very seriously. It's like a sport. Yeah. Quizzers and today's quizzers. Are even better yeah. because of the internet, blah blah blah, and yeah. that that you have. So and and uh, whose idea is this? Uh, the idea is ours. Yours. The okay. idea is ours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that, which is to use this as a tool to to uh, you well, know. I, I get, get that. I get that. So it yeah. works in both ways: uh, yeah. infotainment or whatever you want yeah. to call it. Um, also, uh, arming arming a population almost in a sense. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Uh, what about uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, two friends of mine? By the way, I've interviewed Bill Gates. Huh? Okay, this is true, not mm-hmm. a lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, way back when AIDS awareness, etc., with MTV, yeah. etc., and all that. But we had to pass the questions to his uh, people beforehand and all that, and they were mm-hmm. very dry questions. So I finally, got to ask him a question on my own. I squeeze it in. I just. Asked him about because he had a baby son and I had a baby son at around mm. the same time. So I just asked him one question about the the boy and then mm. he said how he was you know helpless looking after him. And then I asked him one question about how much money he has in his pocket and he mm. said none. Mm. And I had five bucks. So I said I have more money than the richest man in the world. And, <laughs> and, and did me, you give it to him? Or? He was you appalled offered? at the standard of humor. <laughs> <laughs> after all he's done for the world, they couldn't get a better comedian <laughs> to interview him. And but lovely guy, he, yeah. you know, didn't appear to you know, I mean. I, I suppose a lot of them are that way. You know, they don't wear their success on their face yeah. or body, or yes. you know, treat you quite well. Um, yeah. So, what is Bill and Melinda Gates got to do with this whole venture? So they're the, they're supporting this. Uh, but this how do you know them? I, I don't. How powerful I, is Govind Ethiraj? No, no, no. I'm not that powerful. I'm working with people you know who the work minister? with them who work with them. Huh. <laughs> not, no connection. So, no connection. Delhi. No, no connection at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, though I've come close to. Uh, out of one, two, three, and Chidambaram, who do you know? <laughs> okay, don't answer that. <laughs> I've interviewed many of them. I think you have. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um 
so they, I mean, we work with people who work with them, obviously, and uh, and and we pitch this as an idea, and and. But isn't the foundation more about AIDS awareness and all that? From no, AIDS. No, actually, they've uh, they've moved. I mean moved on yeah. uh, to a large. Having degree. given hundred crore gift and not not realizing what <laughs> happened to that money, and but that's another story. I think they've achieved a lot of success in yeah, AIDS awareness, yeah. but I mean, I'm not. I don't work for them, so I I cannot. Uh, yeah. I mean, use data to defend what they were. Uh, they but they're doing. interested in doing this kind of thing, which is basically uh, empowering sort of a yes. young community. What yes. what would be the Yes. Strategy. Yeah. Yes. I think so. I think they want to bring focus on uh, the strategic development goals of the United Nations, and uh, the whole objective of this is to do that. And the UN has 17 sustainable development goals uh, to be achieved by its member nations, which we, India has also. What uh, would be one or two of those goals? So these are. I mean, it's all to do with you know achieving gender equality, financial oh, okay. inclusion. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, so it's more social uh, balance. Yeah. Everything is. It's sustainable sense. development goals are largely social, mm-hmm. and uh, and and the whole idea. See, I mean. This is how we approach in India's panel also, also, right? You say if you fix education and education, and health, and gender, yeah. Yeah. if you fix these three things, then you fix most of the problems that you face. I'm talking about foundational issues. Okay. And and that in some ways is what the United Nations Sustainable and Development Goals. And what North Korea has been doing for the last forty years, <laughs> in their own special way. In their own special way. Uh, again, I'm asking: uh, Did you meet Bill and Melinda Gates? No. Have you, it's, no. So I've no. interviewed Melinda Gates, but independently, I mean, much okay. uh, right. maybe right. a year right. ago. Right. Let's yeah. move away from them because it's about Govind Etheraj, not about Bill Gates. You morons, yeah. no, morons from my. Well, staff or not to the people listening. I mean, we've got to be nice to them. They're not that many, although they are growing. Seven, apparently. yeah. Uh, we're eight at the moment. Mom's just tuned in. Um, okay, let's go back, going now a little mm. bit to your life because mm. it's a very interesting life. I think you've also had this habit of uh, jumping at the right time and moving on to the next thing. You know, if you look at your career. So let's go right back and tell us a little bit about your your past. Where did you come from? How did you land up? So I've been a financial journalist all my life, uh, actually. So more than twenty five years. I oh, used to where, be. Where was school and college? Let's go all school the way. School was in uh, very close by. It was in. St Andrews in Bangalore. Wow, you're an Andrews boy. Yes. Can you play guitar? Uh, no. You must have been very unpopular. <laughs> <A> very <laughs> <laughs> and and a failed uh, one at that. So uh, and college was Elphinstone College. Back in my area. Back right. in your area. Yeah. And yeah, then I started working. And uh, I started as a financial. So what journalist. did you want to do at that point when you? quit college so when i started there were not many options so it's not like you had a choice so either you uh, did mba or you got into engineering and medicine by then the you already generation. missed the your failure missed. if you're not an mba doctor lawyer or yeah. engineer and yeah. and doctor and engineer you should have done maybe well, 3 years before well that before, so yeah. we've al- we've already had missed the bus by then yeah. And uh, journalist was scary. Working. Journalist was worse than advertising. Was people think how will so you make money? So there were two options. So yeah. you could either be a journalist or you could be an advertising. Yeah. And somehow I drifted towards journalism in my first job, which was in Business India magazine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then I stayed in that profession since then. But I moved from magazine, then I moved to. Uh, But that's also uh, because the business was all print at that point, yeah. wasn't it? This yeah. is the 80s. We talk about late 80s, late 90s. 90s. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So pre- I I worked in magazines, then I moved to a newspaper, which was the Economic Times, and from newspaper I. I moved to television at CNBC in 2000. So you're the first generation of television analysts, I would, much. I would presume. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, right there, and it, it was also a very nascent market in the beginning. Yeah, they were only about. F- I think when CNBC started, uh, CNBC India, it was called then. Yeah. They were only, I think, four or five news channels in all. Right. Uh, including Aaj Tak and Z. Right. And NDTV, of course. Right. And uh, the real this, rush started much later. And the greatest channel, Republic, wasn't even born. It wasn't even an idea <laughs> yet in anybody's Maybe eyes. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, glorious days. So you you started. off and uh, take us take us through the initial period of uh, being on television and this uh, whole business growing Yeah, so it's did you have any idea that it would grow as it has? No, grown? no, no, not at all, not at all. I think at that time it was more about working with TV18, working with Raghav Bhel, who seemed like an amazing. Let's give him credit. Guy. He he was Absolutely. wasn't he the entrepreneur? Absolutely, without a doubt. And I think he was an entrepreneur of a very different kind because he always empowered people. Yeah. He allowed you to learn. He allowed you to make mistakes. So I came from the Times of India. Now I have mm. nothing against the Times of India because I had a great learning uh, uh, stint there. But this was very different. Yeah. And if you remember the 2000s, we had actually just Uh, it we had just hit the dot com bubble, correct? And the first dot com bubble. First dot com bubble didn't really work. Yeah, so yeah. the first dot com bubble, and many of us were actually itching to go and do something different. Mm. And thankfully, uh, I I did get a dot com job, and thankfully I didn't take it. Obviously, that organization <laughs> folded up soon after. Do you remember the name? Uh, yes, I do, but I don't want to say come it. Come on, <laughs> it's okay. Now uh, people are back on their feet. A lot of I mean, I, come on. I think it was India Info dot com or India one of those. India Info dot com. I, I, I think remember. it was one of those. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and 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 it all sounded like it was going to go places at that. 
time right yeah. but i didn't take that and uh, I'll, but some of the people i knew did hmm. some of them made it back in time yeah. but uh, i think a few others didn't and then they moved on to even different professions either out of choice also raga was a bit like a mentor because he was very much like touch. a mentor yeah absolutely at that time he was very hands on he was more like a while he was the entrepreneur he was like an editor so he was an editor come entrepreneur and uh, the business part of it he handed over to others and hmm. they also did an admirable job and uh, he you was know, running the organization like any editor would on a daily basis i mean you know monitoring what was happening correct. and asking questions but at the same time it was a bit like uh, the modern day devdutt patnaik i think he's stolen some of that in the sense of using metaphors for different things always remember raghav had all kinds of books around him he had a book on chinese business in china for example once he i remember he wrote a book on china he did right? uh, after that but yeah. he was reading this big book it was like 10000 pages in mandarin or something <laughs> and i was just yeah. no i was just intrigued by the fact that he was a businessman but yeah. he was also sort of a learned man who yeah. liked to you know keep the panoramic view yes. to the world to history to sociology to things around him so in that sense he was he yeah, was ahead of his time to which he added uh, elements of what i would say successful companies like infosys which was all about empowering people Correct. and say that okay you can have this a stake in this company's growth yes. and this is how you benefit from it not the most popular company today though maybe not but <laughs> yeah. maybe not but yeah. i mean over time i mean if you look at it over 20 years the then unblemished has, record yeah, yeah. It, it has an unblemished record in terms of delivering stakeholder value mm. including to people who worked with it mm. so i think from that point of view raga was uh, uh, many leagues ahead of uh, many other media entrepreneurs who okay. were maybe uh, traditional media entrepreneurs they they ran built great businesses they ran them well but they did not necessarily share that uh, so growth wh- wh- with so what do you say to people who say that guys like you all especially the first generation yeah. of you guys who were, were close to business heads business community first name basis let's face it actually you know get to know mm. them on uh, a friend friends level social level uh, that you know i wouldn't use the word embezzling or fixing or whatever but uh, is there a sort of boys club is there a sort of you know sort of come together you, are you saying in general do journalists uh, do that you know or? To, to to move markets or to manipulate markets or to move situations uh. so i would say that uh, maybe the influence journalists had in the late uh, in the 90s late 90s early 2000s was high but i think if as you go into mid 2000s and later there's i too think many. The, yeah i think there's too much of information out there the ability for someone to actually source information put it out in a way that can move markets has dramatically reduced uh and uh, see to move markets you also need to have that ability to ferret out something that is not in public domain i mean Correct. and that takes skill i i don't see too many people having that skill either you know whether you put it out subsequently or not is a different issue so negative or positive it's it's a skill it's a skill or being able to almost uh, it's like a pr thing it's a, no no beyond pr it's, i mean it's good journalism in a way right if you were to do it use it for good reason japanese I mean, call it golf yeah <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> all right uh i it's a trickly question i'll leave it there let's move on now to your life again so so you're there you're the first generation of these journalists who are pushing the barriers understanding the markets uh, i would you know in television in yeah. television also yeah. teaching people there's a yeah. whole generation that learned from you guys literally started going in trading and things like that because they you know so kept the, i've seen people with the television on yeah. in their shops all day yeah. letting you know it's almost like a cricket match for some people but then so that interestingly is how cnbc was created and and your uh, maybe your listeners will find it useful that it was the whole idea was that how do you bring uh, let's say basketball grade uh, action or baseball uh, grade action to finance into finance and that is how cnbc was created wear short pants yeah for one <laughs> but can you you know make it so breathless and continuous which is why you know cnbc i'm talking about the us this is pre or no pre they're yeah. talking about the us where yeah. you see graphics and Ooh, yeah. a lot of emphasis on high quality graphics and numbers and flying and around and these larger than life performers also sometimes yeah so time. and and that's that's the beauty so you know so because talking finance can is an extremely boring thing mm. so cnbc actually perfected the art of merging the two saying okay uh, boring finance with very high Color, quality gvis graphics and numbers numbers flying around and all that and this is what cnbc in india also inherited and then uh, started doing yeah so which is why people you know often transfixed are often transfixed to that screen uh, you know watching numbers constantly flow yeah, past it is like mtv with more numbers yes yes well, fair yeah, enough and which you are quite familiar and, with and with more music as well from what <laughs> i gather uh, let's get back so then you uh, when did you make the move then to go to the next place to bloomberg i think yeah so i mean i left cnbc then i worked with it for a short time with uh, business business standard on the digital side and uh, so your your heart was always in digital you kept getting called back you waited yeah, for this big in, boom to happen in some ways yeah but maybe that digital stint was a little ahead of its time and then so this uh, is your second digital stint this is sense. my second yeah. digital stint yeah. and a little more entrepreneurial yeah uh, the so i worked with bloomberg for uh, i rather i was actually the founding but editor uh, of bloomberg going television. back in time cnbc is still number 1 then it is right by far no at that point 2000 
weeks when you yeah. quit. Yeah. Uh, Bloomberg, so they all they want guys like you, obviously, because they're all the new guys want to fight and punch above their weight. So they want the big names. So you were in demand, so you moved to Bloomberg. Is that fair? In some ways, yes. In okay. some ways, yes. But uh, Bloomberg is, was a startup. I mean, we set it up. Uh, I mean, it was entirely funded uh, by UTV and Ronnie Screwwala. Hmm. So, but we started. I mean, I sort of I was the first person to join, and then we built it up from there. Mm-hmm. And then it became It was UTV I we used to call it It became Bloomberg UTV Then it became Bloomberg India Then uh, it changed hands Now it's uh, the same name As the mayor of New York <laughs> or The last one or The one before that yeah. We will take a quick break We'll come back Lots more to talk about Because uh, where you are now Entrepreneur and uh, uh, Philanthropist of sorts Let's find out when we, After this break With Govind How much you earn Govind Basically Very little give me, Not give enough me a, Give me a figure It's no, all about no, figures You're a finance guy more, A little more than 5 more rupees than five On crores? a good day More than 10 crores 5 rupees on a good day 5 rupees <laughs> Bill Gates. We'll be back. <laughs> How many times have you caught yourself googling stuff on health and wondering if it's the right information? How many times have you heard different health experts give opposing views, which has only left you confused? There are rising cases of cancer, heart, diabetes, stress, and autoimmune diseases. Meet the patients and the experts who paved the path of true healing. Join me, Rachna Chachi, cancer nutrition coach and nutritional therapist on Heal and Hearty. I take you through my own journey of recovery from an incurable disease and the journey of so many others who healed only via nutrition and holistic healing. Find the answers you seek for what's good for your health and what's good for your soul. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. Don't forget your date with good health. All right, back here with Govind and um, lots to talk about still as I lower my mic, not my uh, dialogue, just the mic, which I unfortunately can't lower. Just want to warn you, Govind, before we carry on, yes. that I've uh, got a peck attack happening, which means my chest will suddenly vibrate and I'll not be able to move because of pain. Okay. Don't ask me how and why. It's yeah. not a heart attack. That's okay. It's much worse. That's okay. Um, but look, I, I want to just get into your entire life, which I've not been able to understand fully. We've reached Bloomberg. But mm. then after that uh, comes your first startup, is it? Yes, I mean that's that's India Spend, which is which is what I talked about, right? Which is really about using data to tell stories. And we started it actually as a non-profit. Mm. And the whole idea is that you know. So you were still employed at Bloomberg when you started. No, no, this? I quit. I okay. quit. Okay. I quit Bloomberg. And uh, the whole idea was that you know how do you uh, not depend on advertising? Because if you depend on advertising, then you go in one direction. And Go- if, government patronage is one way. Yes, and try if, that. There's one channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and, yeah. and if you want to do journalism, which is really in public interest, it's tough to sustain it with advertising. And therefore, uh, very idealistically, uh, we thought. I thought that you know maybe we should build it as a non-profit. And so, t- give us an inside scoop. So the advertiser tells you what to do. Advertiser may not tell you what to do, but an advertiser definitely wants numbers. Right. I mean, you may allow an advertiser to tell you what to do, which is also something that happens because if you get desperate, you want to not just revenue. Oftentimes, I feel it's not just about the absolute revenue because everyone makes some money or the other, but it's about how much profit you want to make. And the more profit you make, typically the bigger compromises that you end up making is my. uh, So what you're saying is that you're wrong fit for this job, but I am a right fit for this job (laughs) because I have no scruples and no spine, no backbone, and no morality or no compass. that's fine, right? And that as long as you're being completely open about it. I think the problem is when you're not open about it. The problem open. is when you say that you are uh, you have scruples or you have morals and I you're trying to... I would sell my uncle. In fact, I did. <laughs> okay. But it was a low market at that point. So, we returned him after three days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, yeah. So, you had little pressures? No, I, I mean, I think... Can you, you name st- Can you name specifically No, anyone? I think you have to start small. You know, you have to start small and make sure that you don't uh, think too ambitious. And the non-profit model, I think there are people who want to support it. We have uh, foundations uh, who support our work. In, uh, so how did Govind Ethira as entrepreneur, finance analyst, a dynamic sort of guy, get into a non-profit? It's such an early part of your so, career. So that's the model. I, I mean, it's so... The, the, like I said, the idea was to do journalism, which was in public interest. And therefore, if you want to do journalism in public interest, it cannot be a Google ad supported model where you're saying how do you get the maximum Don't number of that. we want Google as a sponsor on the <laughs> okay. show can't you use another example <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe I should say Facebook 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 yes. Facebook is not coming this way right Abbas Abbas not even paying attention to the podcast yeah. <laughs> we need to make more jokes yeah go on huh. yeah so if you don't want an ad supported model I will not use any names yeah. and then how do you have Sustain, uh, yeah. sustainability yeah. and therefore uh, even internationally 
the non-profit model is one way of going it. So that's how we started. And subsequently, we've uh, added and, and grown even to look at another venture, which is focused more on fake news. Mm-hmm. And that's Boom, which is which sits under a for-profit company. Ah, so what is Boom now? Explain Boom. Boom is where you are right now. Yeah, Boom is uh, also where I am right Not now. Not where India is right now, because <laughs> yeah. you're only 4% growth. Or, where the trillion economy will happen when exactly, since you're the analyst? Yeah, I mean, no, it, it, uh, where it will happen and when it would be, uh, the government would like it to happen are two. But it's a bit like saying that the most cockroaches in the world are in China because they have the most amount of people yeah. who eat the most amount of food and hence there are more cockroaches per food. Yeah. But uh, so is it a population thing that we're just that large, hence the economy grows? To some extent, yes. Not necessarily I mean, on a, on a, in economy. No, on a serious note, yes. I mean, if you have a certain amount of people and... Uh, it's maths. It's maths. Yeah. yeah. A certain number of people in the, in the labor force, they will produce a certain Correct. degree of output and therefore you will reach a certain degree but standard of, of living is not completely correlated to that not necessarily yeah. not necessarily i mean but it is i mean i think are we going in the right direction broadly uh, general questions yes i i would say yes are you happy with the government that's a different question but i'm saying no, economically let's not talk about other issues no economically i think this government can do much more mm-hmm. i think this government can definitely do much more and uh, I, i'm not saying they're at fault for everything so why but is our growth uh, going the other way of late why is that happening so we've slowed down it's why? not like we're not growing but i think the the important thing is what are our aspirations our aspirations are much higher than what we currently are or did we grow too fast and hence we expect too much Likely, I mean, you know, see, you. What is your comparison? Your comparison is a country like China. In mm. a country like China, let's say, uh, has lifted maybe three hundred, four hundred million people out of poverty. Right. Uh, India too has lifted maybe and removed about a hundred million people from the country. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows where they went. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, if you aspire to maybe more people becoming uh, coming out of poverty, more people reaching middle income, more people affording cars and motorbikes and televisions and refrigerators, then maybe we are not moving as fast as we want to be. So that's where I guess the problem is I mean are we uh, but so this was bound to happen is what you're saying we grew fast and there's a sort of a slowdown period with bound to happen uh, I don't yeah so I'm not saying it's necessarily linked to the fact that we grew too fast I think in general ever since the 90s when the country has opened so up so blaming Narasimha Rao just to be clear yeah I mean <laughs> for globalization <laughs> for globalization so we've opened up as a country right now we've yeah. begun moving in a certain direction after the 90s and in, in that direction has meant that more uh, our lives have changed you worked in uh, let's say uh, television you worked in uh, as, as, a, as a VJ and, and all of these things wouldn't have happened pre 90s and these are because new opportunities opened up uh, new uh, in industry started growing and both all of us have benefited from and that and go and better makeup yeah better makeup helps a lot of males be on television trust uh, me. absolutely yeah. huh. so now the thing is we've all used to that that growth or that expansion of activity as we may call it we fly uh, private airlines we use mobile phones we have a choice of mobile phones we have a choice of maybe 10 models of cars bikes all of that is beans economy is growing there is more choice and opportunity now suddenly for whatever reason if those things start slowing down then you obviously are uh, worried and you say no but listen I'm I'm here I want to go there uh, and okay, last point on the subject should yeah. we be worried or is it just something that will uh, I think we should always be worried I think if only if we are worried then will we ask for something better this is what I say about marriage as well you should always be worried <laughs> right. don't be complacent always be nice to your wife otherwise before you know it, she's somebody else's wife yes which is not the worst thing it all depends on how much you have to pay in the out of court settlement okay. but again go and do yeah. not digress let's yes. stick to what we're talking about I want to get back to this quiz and I have um, which is what we're talking about today um, it's called the India Fact Quiz India Fact and quiz. Uh, you I mean the website is IFQ. India Fact Quiz. Karan Johar would call it IFQ. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should too. Yeah. I think we should. We should have him on the show. Yeah. Uh, go on. India, Ask me questions. India, I'm ready. IndiaFactQuiz.com. And oh, right. Uh, you want to plug it? Yeah. I'll do it slowly. And it's IndiaFactQuiz.com. Yeah. And the and do you, you want reverb? Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Huh. <laughs> that doesn't. We give you everything. <laughs> and it's at IndiaFactQuiz uh, on at Twitter India, and uh, Instagram fact and quiz so on. On Instagram, Twitter, etc. Yeah. Got it. Uh, you feel free to keep saying that throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't want want to. <laughs> That's why we're here. No, but. Let me let me try let me taste my uh, ability hmm. and see taste as in T E S T huh? yes <laughs> go on. So, uh, can I, I'll ask you a question. Yeah. And I, what I'll do is I'll get Kostov also to answer a couple. So, come this side, come this side, one of the boys in our studio. Because he represents young India. Yeah. Let's see what they know because he's really like what... He's our TG. He's our TG. Yeah. So, total workforce participation of rural women is greater than that of urban women. More rural women... More rural women work than urban than women. Urban than women. Than yes or no? Kostov? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. True. Kostov says yes. 21 year old Kostov says yes. And he's right. <laughs> well, it's a punt, bro. Come on, go with It's one out of two, man. It's a pure love. Okay. Since we were talking... Talking about protests against lowering green cover, total forest area since 2013 has decreased. Is it true or false? Oh, this is a trick question. Mm. It should be, it's, yeah, I would also go with false. Hmm? false. So, which means you're saying it has increased? No. It's false. the same. It hasn't decreased, <laughs> decreased as bad. Like, 
hmm? it hasn't decre- decreased as bad so it's false so which means it's actually increased are you saying it's increased no no, no, it has you, you, can't have both, you are talking on both sides of your mouth. You're a typical Indian male who doesn't know what he's saying. Uh, so, is it decreased or increased? Just take take a punt on it. Or it increased then? So, yeah, you see, it, it has increased. increased. Yeah. How yeah. is it increased? It has increased. I but mean, how? that's what the data says. Listen, you know the quiz master. The kids are going to ask you this question. How is it increased, it Uncle? Increased Uncle, tell me, go. Because it is increasing elsewhere in the country. Just oh, I know. It? I know some how parts. How is it? How? Because we are. Uh, we're, uh, we're planting trees. Yeah. We are planting or they're We are in Mumbai the... next to Hare Just yeah, remember exactly. what you're saying But that's the whole point of this quiz, right? I mean, you know And, and the whole idea about data so and evidence is, is that... actually a paradox To what uh, the... Somewhere else I mean, in the country Somewhere else The, the, the forestation is increasing So in Orissa They're doing the right thing But uh, in North Maharashtra Perhaps not Something like that Yeah Okay, fair enough Let's not uh, uh, kill the quiz master Next uh, Lesser number You know, we always wonder about education And quality of education for children We say, okay So the question is Are lesser number of children Dropping out of school As compared to uh, Six or seven years ago, true. so less dropouts. Yeah, I, I would. I would true. think true. Yeah. So uh, the interesting but thing this is, this is an easy one. Yeah, but they, I mean, it's good to know that you know actually the problem in India is not of uh, of of of, uh, of accessing education. That used to be yeah. even 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Today, almost ninety nine percent of children uh, get access to primary school education. Right. Which is now why people now are talking about outcomes. People are saying, okay, people are uh, kids are going to school. That's not an issue in this country. What are they getting out of it? Right. Uh, are they learning uh, what they're supposed to learn? Are they able to do maths at the level so that they're supposed to? Just entering the school is not enough. Is not what is the intensity of the education? I yeah. get that point But there's also another thing Y'all are not It's the elephant in the room Which I will uh, talk about Because mm-hmm. I don't think it's right For you to say this Because you know I mean you're on one side Championing the cause of education yeah. But I'm going to talk about mm. it There are too many 12 year olds Pretending to be 6 year olds I've okay. seen this in schools Across the country mm-hmm. They just sit there With hairy legs You mm-hmm. know And I'm talking about women Girls mm-hmm. I mean mm-hmm. how, who, who allows these kids in mm-hmm. uh, why, why aren't we doing Something about that Over age kids I'm only uh, uh, in this you case. You know how many overage somebody. heroes there are in Bollywood yeah. and Tollywood? There are far too many overage. Oh, the women, hmm. there are some seventy-year-old women playing lead actresses now in, in uh, regional films. I, I don't know. We would draw the line somewhere. Okay. Govind is not impressed. He's uh, <laughs> going to leave the studio in, in a sulk. Okay, come on. Give us a couple more. Give us a couple more. Let's see what uh, we can do. Average sex ratio amongst oh. scheduled Stop. tribes. He's sweating. <laughs> Don't say talking sex. about the sex ratio. Okay, gender, gender, bolo, no? gender, bolo. Huh. Among scheduled tribes is better than the country's average. That is more, more female to male. Yeah. Uh, sex in, ratio, yeah. In, Normally, in, when in, you say sex ratio, the community. Uh, what do you think, Kostov? I think that's not again trick right. question. Um, because um, the the, the SC community have a lot of um, women uh, who are not getting getting in there as much as men. So what? Yeah. Getting in there means not in there as in like uh, in the in the quota. No, one second, one second. So let's understand that across India, the male proportion is much more. It's uh, skewed towards males, right? Right? Yeah. No. I, the, so the answer so this is, is that, only about the no. But so the gen, yeah. So the actually so, so the gender ratio or the sex ratio mm-hmm. amongst scheduled tribes is actually more positive than. Is that what you were trying to say? Because I, nobody could understand what you were trying to say. <laughs> Yeah. Please do not become a sociologist of any kind. No, Please stick to your core competence, which is nuclear physicist. <laughs> he's going to be a great rocket scientist. He is. Okay. Yeah, he's, right now he plays <laughs> with his own rocket, but uh, not government approved. We'll see. Huh. Next, give me one, two more. So the question I was asking was, is the average sex ratio amongst scheduled tribes better than the country's average? Right. Right. So uh, the answer is yes. So the average sex ratio is better among scheduled tribes than the country's average. So obviously, so you know, more egalitarian societies in the scheduled tribes. Yes, where people are on equal compared footing, to the average uh, in the country. Wow, yes. can you imagine? I, I, I we are Pakistan's really scheduled tribe. We are on the ST list. <laughs> okay, so I can claim a lot of benefits. Yeah, and our women are damn tough, boss. <laughs> uh, all women here there does look a little masculine, but that's not the point. I mean, uh, why? Why this gender divide has to end? Also, we're all the same. Yeah, we can all grow beards. As you age, you'll find out. There should yeah. be equality. <laughs> yeah. So here's another kind of question, right? So it asks you. Uh, has the, uh, the, uh, the annual per capita consumption of kerosene increased in the last 10 years? Or rather, it states. Okay, so what's the, what's the trick here? Because we've turned so, to other uh, Right, forms. so you know, so when you think about the question a little deeply, if it's stating that the annual per capita consumption of kerosene has increased, it mm. means that people are still using a relatively primitive fuel for Correct. energy, right? Correct. I mean, using... Or not. Mm. Or not. Yeah. So, uh, so the answer is actually false. So no. which means it's not increased oh. uh, in, in the last 10 years. So okay. which means that people are, are switching to... So we are advancing. We are advancing yeah, and so on, yeah. You're just repeating what we're saying. You're the young man. No. This whole thing is for you. You're like a popper going around. He's saying we're advanced. You're saying you're advanced. advanced. Yeah. I, the whole genre of the questions changed from this. This so. <laughs> Govind has uh, specified yes. 17 to 25 is their target audience for this quiz. Right. You're what? 22? 
24. 24. So you're right there. You're, you're yeah. the uh, target audience. So, Kostov, please be good. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like India has no future. <laughs> you might as well have a <laughs> Bangladeshi kid. you are right about. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cynic huh, already. Can you uh. imagine? So, go and give us one more. Um... So this is actually a tougher question and uh, you know it's saying by 2030 India aims to end AIDS. Okay. No, but the, 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 these are these are no, slightly no. Uh, I won't say romantic, but I mean, how do you yeah. quantify all so this? So no, the question is uh, in 2015, which is when I guess we have the last available data. What hmm. was the percentage of HIV? Did it, did it go down? Did it reverse? Is that it? No. So how much is it? I mean, how? I mean, what is the what is the rate today? I mean, is the question six percent? Yeah, so uh, China has come up with a new uh, research where they are trying to eradicate AIDS, hmm. but that was, I think, two, three months ago. Okay. So they're still I'm still worried about how the Chinese do things. The eradication <laughs> can be done in a certain way, you know. Like, I mean, the patient has to be cured, in a sense. Yeah, yeah so the, the figure that we have actually is uh, 0.23%. You know, so which At, means in 2015. Yeah, in 2015. So the point is that uh, one is it, it tells you that not that many people have AIDS, and uh, no, but we'll have to look at 2010 or something yeah, and see yeah. whether from there it's gone down to 2.2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was higher. I mean, it was definitely higher. higher. So, so that's what I'm saying. It's reverse, right? Conquering so, then, it. so then obviously the the maths again makes a little sense that in 15 yeah. years the same pr- uh, proportionate decrease. Am yes, I right? Yes. So it's it 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 going there. Uh, we are able to spell things together, but you youngsters are useless. <laughs> the country has no future. Say it, say it, say it, Costa. Country has no future. <laughs> Lovely. That's the right answer. You progress to round two. <laughs> Get your green card. Keep going. Huh. Yeah. So uh, final th- question. Okay. Like um, um, rank the following states from higher ooh, to lower ooh. in terms of employment rate. Okay. Okay. So higher to lower, which has a higher employment rate and which has Got a lower. It. So Chhattisgarh, Kerala, Tripura, Maharashtra. Uh, Kerala first Kerala first Maharashtra second Tripura. Tripura third So you're saying Kerala has more employment The most Be- uh, okay. More employment The People are employed Okay So you're very uh, Disloyal to your uh, Home state I No I think Maharashtra second It's too big <laughs> There's a lot of unemployment You see the people Who uh, come to Shivaji Park And shout <laughs> Maybe huh? Or somewhere in the other For no reason huh? I think Maharashtra last You see Maharashtra last Because there are a lot of people and So highest the, employment As a Bengali is, You're making fun of us so <laughs> Highest So the answer Highest employment oh. rate Is Maharashtra Oh the second highest is uh, Kerala. Okay, so we were okay. One, third, we switched one, two. Third is Tripura. Chhattisgarh. Oh, and the last sad. is Tripura. How sad. I was hoping Tripura so was the lowest third. employment rate is Tripura. Because I can't bear the idea of calling Chhattisgarh, Chhattisgarh. They should, yeah. uh, how can you name a state after a number? At the end of the day, you know, I mean, that, that's lazy. It's got to have a little bit more to it. They've no? got to come up with a new name. I, I think, think so. I think so. Imagine your relatives. This is my uh, Chachi, Roshan. And that's my Chacha, 16. You, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it works. Oh. Huh. Uh, no one is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Go the finance analyst. This is not fun for him at all. Don't make fun of numbers. All right, listen, we've got to wrap this up. So, do you have any uh, final thoughts? Uh, do you no, want to share I, uh, I think uh, uh, participate in the quiz and uh, it's going to be online. And uh, the first round is entirely online. So, even whether you want to win a prize or not, and I mean, it's not that the prizes are going to be. Uh, it's like the Olympics. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, just participate. Yeah, just participate, see huh. where you stand. It doesn't matter. I mean, you, you may be a student and therefore then you'll qualify and so on but even yeah. if you're not uh, like Kostub right here yeah. uh, do participate oh, are you calling me a non-student no I'm, I'm an saying an unfulfilled student, student. Unf- yeah. <laughs> we're, all, we're all students yes. we're, we're, all students. All, we're all students Learn we're always life, learning yeah. Yeah. and participate and give us feedback and uh, tell us if you'd like to see different kinds of questions or new kinds of questions and essentially how can we all move together in this journey of using data to improve the quality of our lives and that's where I really end or love to end on Superb of course my age group is still looking at dates for, to improve the quality <laughs> of their life. life he's looking at data <laughs> is data the plural of dates is it possible I, we should check the Latin should on this on it. somebody work on that Latin and come back we don't mention Google they aren't sponsoring us yet <laughs> Bobin it's been a pleasure talking to you we have the AMAs coming right now after a small break What's thank you so much Hey everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also like to thank Intel and Storytel for supporting us this month. On The Seen and the Unseen, Amit is joined by author and advocate Chitranshul Sinha. They talk about the historical background of the sedition law and discuss Chitranshul's book, The Great Repression. On The Origin of Things, Chuck narrates a story about a man who revolutionized the concept of fuel in Brazil through the Great Depression and World War II. On Edges and Sledges, the guys talk about the T20 match between India and Bangladesh. 
On Geek Fruit, Tejas and Dinkar are joined by the IVM producer Abbas. They talk about the new Terminator film Dark Fate and the past and future of the franchise. On Football Shootball, we have an exciting episode as our hosts discuss the aftermath of the biggest game this season, Liverpool vs. Manchester City. It's a Children's Day special on IVM Likes as Madhuri, Alika, Ruthika and Abbas talk about pop culture they consumed as children and reflect on how they perceive it now. On Gaby CD, Sunetra and Farhad share the list of their first from their first kiss to their first queer experience to the first time queer representation in art moved them. It's a list you definitely don't want to miss. On The Habit Coach, Ashton talks about measuring and visualizing the progress of our habits with the help of paper clips. On the season finale of Keeping It Queer, Naveen and Farhad discuss their understanding of a breakup and how to get over them with maturity. And with that, let's get you on with your show. If you have any questions for Cyrus, write to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can send an email to whatcyrussays at gmail.com. Okay, AMA time. Abbas, we're joined by the beautiful Kajol. Thank you. Who's a seven-time national champion. Off. Mm-hmm. Poetry slam. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is wearing a denim jacket in this heat. Yeah. Let me tell you that I've been sweating so much from five in the morning. I can't tell you. I'm now yeah, thinking the, of carrying oh. those, you know, those thing, makeup things that uh, water flasks. Right. Yeah. You spray water onto your hair. Yeah. Even the barber sprays. Yeah, the barber. Him. Sorry, yeah. I should have used barber. <laughs> I sound like an elitist artist with my makeup people. But my point is that I want. I, so I put that in my what we call the bagal in Gujarati, mm. the armpit. So, in Hindi also. Tuck, tuck. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Hindi. In Hindi, it's from the epiglottis bagal. Epiglottis is Urdu. I, I, I can pick that up. Uh, yeah. Aap epiglottis mein kya hai? I've heard that very often on platform 16, right here. Uh, right here. Yeah, back to your armpits huh? back to my armpits so I, I, I've been sweating a lot because now the last three days well, we are recording somewhere in the uh, 10th of October 6th of October I don't even know 9th of October, 9th of October yeah. which is Lenin's birthday isn't it today or tomorrow uh, <laughs> important day for me okay. yeah, but anyway coming back to my mm. problem it's full summer now we're back to what we call the second yeah, summer let's yeah. face it and uh, so I'm sweating all the time 24 hours okay yeah and they are only 23 hours. Kaj is like, okay, and she has no point inter- is. She has no inter- she's met many men like me. This is the uh, yeah. conversation level is this. I sweat so much, I'll check it out. <laughs> she's like, not another guy. First date, what an impression. Yeah. Has there ev- any man done that? Of course, done every man does that. Putting the armpit up and say, watch it. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, oh my God, I got acidity from last night. Like, okay. that, that's the come on line. <laughs> that is the come on line. It's very that's interesting. The kill. Yes. That's the kill. First was the foreplay with the bugger. Yeah. Like, oh, the kill. I tell you, we men, science. It's a science how to put our girl in 37 years huh. okay start, Abbas, shall we uh, start? Okay, first one comes from Kunal Ghai uh, oh recently God. protests are taking place all over the world for different issues whether it's Hong Kong that's or, Mumbai happened. or Iran young people are coming in strong numbers to protest do you think these youth led protests are beneficial or are they a threat to public order well, and yeah. have you participated in a protest and can you share I did I did uh, uh, two or three one I remember was that Aam Aadmi Party's initial thing where they oh, all really? called you us part of that? I went to BKC and then uh, Sunny realized it was too hot <laughs> so I voted Congress that year <laughs> because nobody called me from that party Right. and now you have to vote BJP otherwise you may have to leave so, mm. exactly. so Aam Aadmi no chance but yeah I, I, I have for animal activism I'm always ready to go but I can't bear the heat mm. so we've got to I think protests in uh, tropical countries if you want to get it right you have to go past sundown like it's o'clock. candlelight march Candlelight march yeah. We need to hold the candle then My arm pains I'll sweat again no, but That's a very Birbal Akbar kind yeah. of <laughs> And it's suddenly very romantic You're walking And you look It's Kunal Vijaykar You know you've got the <laughs> Candle in front of you I mean really But yeah so I have But now I forgot the question Thanks to What do you think uh, Youth led protests Are they a uh, yeah, but that's a generic thing. No? It's all, there's all, the youth of that generation always thinks about... Are they a threat to public order? Will they be beneficial? The public order is another issue. How do you... I mean, in civilized countries... I'm not mm-hmm. saying we're not civilized. <laughs> <laughs> but in civilized countries, there's a certain decency and civility to your protests. Right. So, you know, you do not stop traffic. You do not come in the way of other people. You do not scream and shout and scratch your crotch while protesting. You mm-hmm. don't shoot people or mm-hmm. burn people or that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, there are countries and cultures that do that. But unfortunately, it's not always seen that way. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I don't like it. I, I hate no, that No but I think Protests even, should happen even, even festivals I don't think anything should de- uh, Civic society Should not get disrupted This is my belief Firmly My yeah, thing but. is Protests happen For a very short term goal Right People don't plan What happens If the protest is successful You're young and like idealistic the, And plus you all have Scootsy So you can order food While protesting Nobody we didn't have that. Scootsy Cyrus Nobody People uses Scootsy Swiggy and Zomato Why what's wrong with Scootsy I thought, I thought, is a bygone era now But Scootsy and Swiggy Are the same thing no, One bought not. the other One bought the other I have the proof So now, so now Scootsy is part of Swiggy Yeah <clears throat> okay. So how does it matter Does does it really matter in the end no, Where have we gone I want to protest This whole food issue <laughs> 
Let okay, there cool. be a scootsy for every Indian. Hmm. Huh. Let's go to the next one. No, you don't, what about Kajal? Let her answer you. <laughs> she oh. said no protest should happen. I think protest should happen. Three words for the girl and we're done. <laughs> we balance exactly. out the gender. Yes. I'm not God. sweating as much as y'all. <laughs> this was the Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my long pontification and then one word from you, one word from the other. One. What's the point she's of all a, this? She's a woman of few words. She, uh, oh, summarized. boss. <laughs> you've been married not even a month. <laughs> he's, he's not, not been married at all. If he's married, he's just kept quiet. <laughs> you would known by now. Yeah. Okay, this one comes from Monish Nair. Cyrus, you're the best resuscitation device for people with Monday morning blues. Heck, you're the best resuscitation device for people with all morning blues. Having said that, so, when... Huh. So, I was just thinking. Hmm. Uh, I just realized it was a stupid thing to, to think about, so I won't say it. But if I was to say it, huh. I just realized it's not a radio show which comes at a certain time. Uh, no, like but a new, new episode releases on Monday, no? Monday yeah, and Thursday. Yeah, but you just drop it when you feel like it. That's true. Yeah. God, that sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that Kajal, another n- n- pick up line <laughs> Hey, man, I'm going to drop it When I feel it, I'm drop it I'm stuck I like how you became a Delhi guy For that pick up line oh, 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 You have to be a Delhi guy When you want to entertain women yeah. Right? What uh, I, I love about my, what no, I love about my Delhi cousins Is that they're always confident mm-hmm. There's something about that They're always confident you, When they talk to a woman also very confident I get it, it goes I nowhere. misplaced I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's a nice touch yeah. uh, When Cyrus goes off topic Rambles on Interrupts a guest While they are speaking Speaking, what is the first thought that comes to Abbas's mind? Ah, Other than shit, would oh really like God. to know this. A question yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, Thanks I for telling <laughs> us. This is <so> stupid. <laughs> I thought I should take this question because I talk a lot. No, no, I just signal you to come back to the topic or I just stop you and tell you to come back on topic. No, I, think I, we, I just I, I think mentally, we discuss it mentally think often. to chop this off in the edit. So. Let's ask Kajal. Uh, Kajal is uh, as a guest. neutral. As yeah, a neutral. Exactly. Not as a guest, as a neutral. No, this is now I, fight can between I, say, can I and speak as a guest? Uh, well, two Indian men talking, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that y'all should give me some sort of a device where I can like I, I don't like interrupting Cyrus in the middle. No, no, they're talking about whether we, uh, whether I take the call, uh, you go in another direction of the conversation and irritate the guest. Interrupts also interrupts, interrupts a guest. Yeah. Well, the interrupt is just interrupting, but you're going in another direction. <laughs> then his whole point is like redundant because we've gone to something else while he's trying to explain. I think that's what he's trying to say. Mm. I kind of feel sometimes like I'm in the middle of a ping pong match. Like I don't know where to get in. But assert yourself. What are you worried about? There no, <laughs> okay. there, there's no punishment here. <laughs> you know, uh, Saj Kajal was a guest on another one of our podcasts called The Empowering Series. Yeah. And after the recording, I asked her, how was the recording? And she's like, I got to speak. <laughs> I'm empowered. Yeah. I was but very see, empowered. I'll give you my background. I come from, like I keep saying, my wife, my daughter and my mother are all alphas. Hmm. Okay, so I don't have any women around me who are not going to assert You're themselves. You're the Kajol in your I'm house. I'm the Kajol <laughs> in... Uh, no, again, Kajol. This is not a pickup line. This is not a pickup line. <laughs> Please don't feel bad. Yeah. But it's true. Hmm. So, you know, I'm used to very strong women and will just assert themselves and tell me to shut up. My, you have to hear my daughter speak to me now. It's just ridiculous after some time. Mm-hmm. And they, they'll have to call in a counselor for me, not her. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, just say what you want. Feel no all fear. Right. That's enough. Oh, don't talk to me. <laughs> keep it down. Keep it down, Kajal. God, That's all the questions. Control we these have. people. Yeah, thank you so much, Abbas, for letting me yeah. talk. I'd like to ramble on about something else, but some other time. All right, cool. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored, I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just just, just follow me. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter, on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. And that's what Cyrus Says. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Pesa Pesa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo Advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. Look, up in the internet, it's a meme. No, it's a cat video. No, it's the Geek Fruit Podcast. 
That's right. We interrupt this riveting broadcast to tell you about our show, The Geek Fruit Podcast, where Tejas, Dinkar, and I, Jishnu, talk about everything in pop culture, including DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Netflix, and everything in between. You know how your friends hate it when you ramble about some nerdy crap and you just want somebody to listen to you? Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do about that, but come listen to us ramble and it'll almost be like the real thing. Kind of. Listen to new episodes of the Geek Fruit Podcast every Monday and the Geek Fruit Bulletin every Thursday on iTunes, Google Podcasts, the IVM app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy listening, you nerds.